Hey all, Tony Bing here. Hello and welcome to my Astro Legion M game build for Doctor Strange for Marvel Heroes Omega for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. In this build guide video we will look at the skills and talents required to run the build. We'll also look at the synergies. We will have a look at the infinity point allocation and this is where you would place the first 100 points. We'll check out the general gear and priority and at the end of the video we have some gameplay to show off how the build actually works as well. Now, if you want to jump to any particular section, as always, check out the description. There will be timestamps there. Otherwise, we'll start off by looking at the skills. The skill setup we have here then is all about using a ton of different cooldown skills. And then when our mystic energy is full, we'll spam a particular skill. And then we go back to our cooldown skills. It will make sense as I run through them. Now, the main filler I'm using is Bolts of Baltac, if that's how you say that, and it gains a 10% damage buff for 6 seconds after using a cooldown power, and that stacks 5 times, so 50% buff because we will continually be firing off cooldown powers. Now, the first cooldown power we look at is 7 Sons of Cinnabis, so it does a nice amount of damage, has an increased critical hit chance and critical hit damage, and this is a skill that our actual summons, once we cast them all, they will cast this as well. The next skill is Icy Tendrils of Ichthalon. This one, you've got your initial damage pack, it slows and weakens the enemies, and it actually will summon an Ice Golem as well, which is pretty useful, there's a bit of tanking for you. Next cooldown skill, Flames of the Faltine. With this one, it works as a dot and it pulls enemies towards the centre of that particular area. We then have Crimson Bands of Sitarak. It was a choice between Demons of Denak and the Crimson Bands, but I felt that the AoE you had on the Crimson Bands would be better because it hits over a much wider area, whereas Demons of Denak is just single target. But with this one, it works as a dot, mobilises the enemy for 3 seconds, and it's got a low 6 second cooldown. That's like the rest of our cooldowns, with the exception of Seven Suns, which is a little bit shorter at 4 seconds. So we'll constantly be firing all them off. Once our Mystic Energy is actually full, what we then do is we would cast Astral Projection five times. Now, Astral Projection, through the talent choice I've got, they will mirror your moves. So they'll mirror the Bolts of Baltac, which is the main spender. And this is why when we get to the gear section, we go a bit heavier on our resource so we can actually sustain it. But they'll cast that. They will cast, let's see, it's Seven Sons of Cinnabis. And they will also cast Icy Tendrils of Ichthalon. So when all five of them are up and they're mirroring a spender and two cooldown skills, they'll do an insane amount of damage. It really is a whole lot of fun. Now, the final skill we look at is the All Seeing Eye, which is your signature. It is nice. Initially, when you look at it with the one minute cooldown, some people might think, should I drop this? But through our gear choice, we can increase the duration on it. And through cosmic effects and using mystic energy, you can reduce the cooldown as well. So I'd say it's most definitely worthwhile keeping in your rotation. But next up, let's have a look at the talents. First talent we have here then is mystic rejuvenation. So with this, upon reaching maximum mystic energy, cooldown powers cast within 3 seconds will critically hit. But also you restore 25% of your max health and 25% of your max mana, and that is quite important so we can sustain all the summons firing off all the different skills. The next talent is Guardian Seraphim, so Shield of the Seraphim, which is a really nice defensive buff, automatically activates when you fall below 50% health, and this is so useful for the fact that we can struggle a bit for space to fit in all these skills, so if you can get any that can auto-activate, then ab that is absolutely perfect for them. Now, the next talent, Flaming Frost, so Flames of the Faltine and Icy Tendrils of Ichthalon are both buffed. The Flames of the Faltine will pull enemies in like a Vortex, and the Icy Tendrils will summon a Golem. We then have Astral Legion, so each projection created with Astral Projection increases your damage by 10%, and will be casting 5 of them at a time, and prevents 2.5% of incoming damage, so that would be 12.5% of incoming damage as well. Now, finally, we have Astro Invocations. So, with this one, Astro Projections can now also mirror cast Seven Sons of Cinnabis and also Icy Tendrils of Ichthalon, two skills that are in a rotation there. So, it all comes together with that final talent. But what we'll do next is have a look at the synergies. 
We start off here looking at the primary attributes, and that would be fighting and intelligence. That's covered by Beast, Electra, and War Machine. The more genetic synergies are Blade, Hawkeye, Hulk, She-Hulk, and also Squirrel Girl. And then finally, we have Doctor Strange that works great due to the magic power damage. And then for your final synergy, you want one that would offer you some range power damage. There's quite a few heroes that can do that. The one I went for in this instance would be Jean Grey, but as mentioned, there's a few options out there. But what we'll do next is we'll have a look at the infinity point allocation, and this is where you would place the first 100 points. For the synergies, we'll use my trusty node. It's the Mind Gem and Deep Thought. That provides 250 mana, and that is required if you want to cast the five summons and also use a main spender as well, as opposed to a basic skill that wouldn't do as much damage. And you've also got the Mind Mastery bonus of the cost reduction of 10%, which also helps out a whole lot as well. But for the next section, we'll look at the general gearing priority for the build. As always here then I'll give a quick rundown of the general direction you want to go for gear wise and that means in future when new gear comes out you can use the tips here to help you decide if you want to move about your items and equip some newer ones. But for the legendary this works out perfect for them, it's the Warlock's Eye, it offers damage rating to magic powers, critical hit rating to magic powers, all these powers do have the magic tag. It also gives you 200 mana, which is great for keeping your mana up, so we can use that spender for the summons. 20% power duration. This actually affects your signature, and it affects the summons as well, so it's fantastic on them. And then you've got the rank 5 proc, which is great as well. For the medallion, you've got two options. If you want to go for more offensive, you go for Caecilius, which offers you magic damage. Or if you want to go for a more defensive one, you've got Malakith. And you can see when you hit with a magic power, you gain 150 health. And this hasn't got a one second internal cooldown the way other sources of health does. So with all these dots going off, you'll be getting 150 health every single time. It really does help them out a lot. There's nothing in particular you really need to look for in the catalyst. You can, if you feel you need it and you're having spirit issues, you can go for spirit and hit or spirit and med kit, but it's not really needed with the setup I'm using here. For the relic, using the relic of Gibberum, and this gives us mana, again, that's to keep our mana pool up so we can use the spender on the summons. When it comes to the actual artifacts, I normally don't cover them in too much detail, but there's some that are perfect for them. Now, the first one, which is great, is the Mental Focus Headband. So it's got Intelligence, Flat Damage Rating, and it's got up to 15% power Radius, which is really good, because a lot of these skills actually will be increased by that. We then have the nice Tomb of Oster, which is fantastic on Magic characters. Drops anywhere in the game, so it's just a random artifact. But when you're above 90% max health, you gain a whopping 2,000 magic damage, which is just huge. And the medallion of Caecilius actually helps us stay above that 90%. Now, I've got a cosmic gem in the curse here that I wouldn't necessarily use on him, but I want to use it to show off the cosmic item effects. So while in combat, your abilities cost 15% less mana. And again, that ties in with the fact we want the summons to be able to use the spender to pump out a lot more damage. For the rest of the fixes, your slot 1 to 5, your ring, you can focus on attributes. You can go for fighting or intelligence, it's really down to you because he doesn't have any guaranteed crits. And also you want to go for brutal strike rating as well. But with the gearing section covered, we've got some gameplay and I figured best level to do would be the Dimensions Collide operation where we take down all the bosses. This should be a whole lot of fun. Now, I'll quickly mention as always, this is to show off the rotation and how the build works. It's, I don't have best in slot gear because I've got so many heroes that I'm doing these videos for, but I hope the gameplay is fun to watch regardless. If there's any questions, feel free to ask and I'll see you all again soon.
I am pain. Impossible. Right where I want you. 